Hello and welcome. My name is Sam. I am the CEO and author of the Don't Miss the Beat textbooks and social media platforms for the Cath Lab and soon to be EP Lab. I'm not a physician. I am an RCIS, Registered Cardiovascular Invasive Specialist. My background is in cardiovascular technology and cardiopulmonary sciences. I partnered with CardioVisual today to bring you this little talk on peripheral arterial disease, specifically focusing on arthrectomy, which is one of the many treatment options available. Let's dive on in. For this specific segment, when we're talking about peripheral arterial disease, we're talking about specifically the legs. We can treat the in the neck, the carotids, the arms, the legs, even the aorta, kind of in the abdominal area, the renals. There's a lot that is called peripheral, which is really anything outside of the realm of specifically the heart, because you have arteries and veins all over your entire body. And there's a process called atherosclerosis that can apply really anywhere in the body that you have a vasculature. We hear about it in the heart the most because I think heart attacks and those types of things are a very specific a disease state that is a lot of people are very familiar with. But the one that tends to get overlooked is peripheral arterial disease when they really go hand in hand. People who have peripheral disease are very likely to have cardiac disease and people with atherosclerotic cardiac disease are very likely to also have peripheral arterial disease. So it's something that's important to bring attention to. It's easily overlooked. And I just want to teach you a little bit about some of the treatment options that we have, which are very similar to what we have in the heart. But the thing with the arteries and the legs, some of them are a lot larger than the ones that we have in the heart. So we have some more aggressive treatment options that we can do that might not be available in the cardiac side of things. So what is atherosclerosis? So if you kind of break this word down, into two parts. You have atheroma, okay, the athero part. That's a fatty material that develops between the vessel layers. Um, athero in Greek means paste or gruel, kind of like that oatmeal looking stuff. And when you have that soft plaque, this is kind of how it, it starts out. Then you have sclerosis, which is the hardening of a tissue. So when you kind of put these two together, this is just one example. The artery becomes hard due to the presence of plaque. Atherosclerosis really progressing over time or a chronic condition, the plaque might start soft, but it can harden over time. It can start to erode away the intima, which is the inner lining of the vessel, it can become calcium, which is really where we're gonna talk about some of these atherectomy devices. So let me take a minute to kind of draw what the what I mean when I say it develops between the vessel layers. So your vessels have three layers, okay? They have an innermost layer, this lighter pink one I'm drawing that I'm gonna call the intima, the middle layer, M for middle or muscle, and that is the media. And then the outer layer is the adventitia that kind of holds it all together. So plaque actually develops between these two layers, between the intima and the media. It's not actually out here in the lumen, which is where all of your blood is flowing. So what happens over time is you have this plaque burden kind of grow and develop here. And that is where you get a, a lesion, a stenosis, and that is why this lumen looks a little smaller, right? So the blood that was here before is now only here and you're reducing that blood flow. Now, what can happen over time when I was talking about erodes away the intima. So when that plaque burden becomes tougher, harder, and it might develop into calcium, you might start to get these calcium nodules. Now, where is the intima, right? Where is this this pink color? Well, it's gone. And then what happens is that lumen becomes more and more compromised. And again, this can develop really severely and you can get kind of that 99% stenosis. So what do we do about this? That is where the atherectomy comes in. This is harder and kind of beyond the point of just ballooning and stenting something. What you need is to get this part of the lumen back, right? Before you go to put a balloonish stent in there, you need this to go away. So that is what atherectomy is doing. Atherectomy, if we again break down the word, removal, ectomy, okay, removal of the athroma. So what, how do we accomplish that? Well, we can do that a few different ways in the, and the, again, this is only talking about the peripheral segment. The heart is a completely different ballgame. 
So you have directional, rotational, orbital, and laser. All of these are mechanisms of atherectomy. They're just achieved in different ways with different types of equipment. So directional atherectomy, by the term you choose the direction. So you have the resection of plaque with a cutting device, more like a blade, right? Like if you're shaving an area and it cuts in a longitudinal plane. So you can remove plaque in a single plane with multiple passes. So this would be a perfect example. This is an eccentric plaque, which we'll talk about in a second, but I would take a blade and kind of, if the vessel was longitudinal in this way, I would be taking the blade and kind of dragging it along the vessel and excising and removing the plaque on that side or the calcium on that side of the vessel. Then you have rotational. So rotational and orbital are drills, which I'm a little more familiar with. Rotational devices have a, a rotating burr with some type of abrasive material on it. So think of it like a sander. Some of the more aggressive side of the devices have additional blades on top of that to debulk some of the plaque. Remember, these peripheral vessels are larger, so you can kind of have larger plaque burden. You need more abrasive devices. And what that will do is it kind of spins around here and those blades will cut into the plaque and or calcium to remove it. And some of them have an aspiration device so that doesn't just go all downstream and it actually gets excised. Orbital, so this is kind of similar to rotational devices. Think of rotational devices like a little spin top and we'll talk about the difference of these in a second. And then orbital has one crown and it orbits 360 degrees around the vessel. And then you have laser. Laser is completely kind of different from these because it doesn't have like a burr, a crown or something like that. It has a vaporization process, a photochemical, photothermal, photokinetic process with some saline that is injected. It creates this vapor bubble and kind of ablates and eats it away and I put a, a lightsaber because that's a very similar concept. So first up is directional. So remember that blade I talked about that kind of gets dragged across and all of that is being captured at the same time. There's the Turbo Hawk, Hawk one, depending what you're familiar with, but the idea is it takes this single blade and kind of drags it along this plane. You get to choose it, so I could turn this up here the other way and drag it along there, which is why it's directional. I'm choosing what plane I'm treating in. Eccentric lesions, this is what it is great for because if you have an eccentric lesion, so this one is eccentric, think of it like a croissant, the one I drew earlier where it's only kind of on one side of the vessel versus a concentric lesion is kind of 360 degrees around the vessel and pretty even. So if I use the burrs that spin, it would treat this really well. But if I use the burrs that spin, I don't wanna treat this healthy vessel, I just wanna treat this side. So this is where directional might work really well for you because you can kind of just try to excise the plaque on that single side. Then there are some combination devices in the peripheral space that we don't have in the coronary space. These are just some examples. The Hawk One, Silver Hawk, and Turbo Hawk that we talked about with this directional blade has this capturing component. So it drags it and pushes it in here so it's not just going downstream, it's being captured, can be removed and cleaned and reused. Then you have Jetstream, Phoenix, and Rotorex, all kind of different within their own. So these are rotational atherectomy devices, but they have some sort of capturing component. So Jetstream has rotational blades, but also aspirates. That is this one. So you see this has the kind of drill at the beginning, these outer blades are wings, and then there is a port here where all of that will get sucked in and removed. The Phoenix, also rotational, more like a, a Phillips screw head, and it captures at the same time. So it goes through this helix and gets captured. Not exactly the same as this, because it's not getting pushed in, but it's getting passively captured. The Rotorex is rotational, so this tip right here rotates, just like the Jetstream one does, but you have thrombectomy. So it does have an aspiration port as well, mainly to kind of capture clot, but can capture some of that debris as well. None of these combo devices are used in the coronary arteries. This is all just in the peripheral vasculature. And this is what I was talking about, bigger vessels, bigger plaque related issues to deal with. So you bring out some of these more interesting devices. Now rotational, again, remember is an umbrella term. So you have subcategories in the peripheral space. So the first three we've talked about are Jetstream, Phoenix, and Rotorex. But the other one we talk about that you see in the coronary space that's also used in the peripheral space is the peripheral rotablator. 
Now it's called Rota Pro in the coronaries. That's the newer devices. Uh, peripheral still has kind of this older device, but the mechanism is the same. So rotational is like the earth kind of rotating on its own axis. It spins in one place. So for these others that we talked about, you have it along a wire, right? All these go over a wire and it just kind of spins on that wire. In comparison, orbital lathrectomy, so Diamondback 360 works based on orbit. Now orbit, you might've heard of like the moon, right? Orbiting around the earth. Now, what is the difference between that? Well, think about the earth. If the earth is spinning on its axis, right? And then the moon is orbiting around the earth, it has a completely different movement. So where you have this vessel and you have that single crown, it's going to rotate 360 degrees around versus rotating in this single space. Orbital lathrectomy is also used in the coronary space. But the peripheral sizing for Diamondback 360 was CSI, now Abbott, has a lot more variation to it because we're dealing with many different sizes, right? Ephemeral artery is very large and SFA is kind of medium size. And you have below the knee, like the anterior tibial, posterior tibial that are very small. So you can't use that same size device throughout everything. So they made some different crowns. And this is what I was talking about, that crown that kind of rotates 360 degrees around. So you have the max crown for mid to moderate calcium, the solid crown for dense calcium, and you'll see how these are diamond crusted. The classic crown for Ben's osteolesions below the knee, this is what you'll be most familiar with from the coronary space, and you can see those coils. The coiling is very different. And then you have the micro crown, much smaller. It isn't eccentric, it is straighter alignment. And this is for below the knee, tortuous vessels, and type bends. And lastly, we have laser. So the Excimer laser and then the Orion, which is something different for the peripheral space that you might not have seen before. Excimer laser has been around for a while. That's this one. So it uses UV energy and processes to perform athroablation. Remember the blade sit away. So it doesn't need that aspiration port because it isn't really going anywhere. It's kind of just vaporizing. Best for soft plaque, instant restenosis, and CTOs, chronic total occlusions. And then you have Orion, which has several different sizes. This is a newer one on the market. It treats above and below the knee, has some different size options. Only a few of them are indicated for instant restenosis. And then larger catheters also have some aspiration capabilities. So some of these are those combo devices we talked about earlier. The wavelengths and mechanisms of each of these is a little different, but they're both trying to accomplish that athroablative effect. So I hope you enjoyed that overview of some of the devices that we use in this peripheral arterial disease space. And this is just a few of them. These are on the more aggressive side. You can treat with just balloons and or stents. So we have some drug eluding balloons where we don't leave any stent behind and it's a immunosuppressive drug that helps in the healing process. So that is something that is, is commonly used and we could use that after these devices have been used. So if we go back to this example of the lesion, once we have taken away this calcium and we get this lumen back, right? We're not gonna get anything perfect. We can't really go out in, in the walls there. But once we have that lumen area back, you created some injury, right? So this endothelium and this new intima isn't just there yet, but it will over time heal and become that. So what we would do is balloon this area to smooth it out, right? And sometimes there's a drug on that balloon, a drug eluding balloon. So we inflate it for about a minute or two. We let that drug penetrate into the endothelium and the intima and then when we remove the balloon, the drug stays there and that can help with the healing process over time so that you do get the smooth surface back again without it kind of overgrowing and, and overreacting. And the goal is to have that nice smooth surface again so that they have a restoration and blood flow. Outside of the athrectomy category, there is also lithotripsy shockwave, which is a balloon that uses those sonic waves to not ablate the calcium, but what it does is it makes that harder calcium more soft plaque. So when we do go in with the balloon, it will actually compress that plaque and help gain that lumen area back.
And the same idea, you would follow that with a drug-coated balloon so that it can again help that healing process of that endothelium and new intima healing the lumen. I know this was just a brief overview, but thank you for hanging in there with me. If you currently work in the cath lab and maybe you're watching this just to get a head start on things or to clarify some things for you, um, I do not have a peripheral book yet. It is coming, but I do have a brand new cath lab orientation manual and a coronary intervention manual that goes over some of these devices, but how they're used in the coronary space a diagnostic peripheral expansion for peripheral anatomy, impella if you use that, and then the RCIS study guide if you're prepping for your board's exam. But regardless, I try to post about everything that's in the realm of cardiology, so please follow me on social media and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Don't Miss a Beat. Thank you so much, CardioVisual, for having me, and I look forward to doing more of these with you in the future.